Roman numerals are a form of additive notation where the value expressed is the sum of the values of the symbols. So 40, which is 4 tens, is 4 x's. On occasion, subtractive notation would be used. So 40 can be viewed as 10 subtracted from 50, which we'll write as xl. However, subtractive notation was not standardized and not common. And part of the reason is that Roman numerals without the subtractive forms are actually very easy to compute with. The Romans invented a device for computing, subsequently known as the abacus. The abacus consisted of a number of columns corresponding to the values 1, 10, 100, 1000, and so on. And there might be some additional columns corresponding to fractional amounts, which we'll ignore. A marker, a pebble, could be moved or placed adjacent to the center, and its value would count if it was on the center line or if there was a continuous set of pebbles leading to the center line. Pebbles below the line counted for one unit, while pebbles above counted for five units. The Latin word for pebble, by the way, is calculus. So let's try to represent the number, and an important idea, numquam converte. In other words, avoid the temptation to try and read what the value of this number is. It is CCXVI. So we want two Cs, so we'll push two pebbles in the C column towards the center. We also need an X, so we'll push a pebble in the X column towards the center. The V is five I's, so that means we'll push a top pebble in the I column towards the center. And we also need an I, so we'll push a pebble in the I column towards the center. Now to add, we'll set down our sum ends. So we've already set down CCXVI, and we want to add DXXXIII. So we'll add a D, three X's, and three I's. So a D is going to correspond to the top pebble of the C column. Three X's, we can add those. Three I's, we can also add those. And we can now read our total. The pebble above the C is a D. The two below are two C's. There are four X's. The pebble above the I is a V, and there are four more I below it. And so that gives us our total. The abacus spread from Rome and eventually evolved into the Chinese Sanpan and the Japanese Sodoban. In Europe, it evolved into the medieval counting table, also called a casting board. The use of a large, flat surface for counting led to the use of the term counter for similar large, flat surfaces. A typical counting table had several horizontal and vertical lines that divided the table into different parts. Each horizontal line corresponded to a Roman numeral, the one, the ten, the hundred, or the thousand. A token placed on the line had the value. A token placed between the lines had the value of the intermediate symbol. That's five, or fifty, or five hundred. So again, we could try to add two numbers. And so first, we'll place the counters on the appropriate lines. The important thing to remember is the written form of the number tells us exactly which tokens to place where. For XXVII, there are two X's, so two tokens are placed on the X line. There's a V, so a token is placed in the V space. There are two I's, so two tokens are placed on the I line. For the other number, we place and to add, we bundle and trade. Remember, each space represents five of the lower line. Five I is V, five X is L, 
5C is D. And each line is 2 of the lower space. 2V is X, 2L is C, and 2D is M. So we might notice there are 5 tokens on the I line, and V is 5I. So we trade the 5 tokens on the I line for 1 token in the V space. But now we have two V's, which we can trade for one X. And now we can read off the table. We have an L, four X's, and a V. And so the total is L, X, 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 V. We can also try to subtract. So let's subtract X, X, V, I, I from LXXXV. So we'll set down the subtrahend for reference. We don't really need to, but it's a convenient thing to have in front of us. We can then match and cancel. We want to subtract 2x, so, well, we'll just remove 2x. We want to subtract a v, so we'll remove a v. We want to subtract two i's, but we don't have them. So we can get them by trading. We trade an x for 2v, but we still don't have any i's, so we'll trade a v for 5 i's. And now we can subtract the two. And so our final answer is going to consist of and so subtracting gives us L, X, V, I, I, I. So it's important to note that the counting table allows for very rapid computations with quantities expressed in Roman numerals as long as subtractive notation is not used. For example, X, L, 40 could not be represented on the counting table until it was mentally converted into 4x's. Consequently, subtractive notation remained rare as long as the counting table was used.